recently, if you've been following on my Instagram page, you would have seen that I got a brand new pair of shoes the other week and absolutely loving them. But in this video today, I want to break down my thoughts after having some conversations with some people in the industry about types of shoes, selection of shoes, what our thought processes are in terms of uh, getting into a new pair of shoes when it is time to upgrade. Because inevitably we do enough Ks, we burn through uh, burn through the soles or burn through the uppers, things like that. We need to get a new pair of shoes, but how do we decide which ones are the best for us? I'm gonna go through my thoughts today, a little bit more so in terms of my experience rather than uh, going into the ins and outs of the podiatry side of things. I'm gonna stay away from that because that's not my, my specialty as you know. But I'm just gonna take you through my thought process because I think it's a really simple and effective way of then understanding, all right, where do I need to head to get the most out of my shoes performance, but also make sure it helps me throughout training and it, and it starts to prevent things like injuries and, and some unnecessary issues. So like I said, breaking down my thoughts about shoes, uh, let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Nick here talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Thanks to everyone who's already subscribed to the channel, but if you haven't, please consider hitting that big red subscribe button down below. Turn on notifications, stay up to date with all the latest content coming up here on the channel. And something I wanna challenge you to do, we're getting very, very close. I think we're about 110 or so people away from hitting a thousand followers on Instagram. Absolutely loving the support over there. Getting lots of great questions coming through on Instagram as well. So go check that one out. I'll put it just down in the bottom corner here at NJ underscore sports science. Go ask your questions. If you can't make it to a live stream here on YouTube uh, on a Wednesday night, Melbourne time, chuck your questions through on Instagram and I'll answer them on the live and we'll post it up as a video. I'll send you a written reply as well. We can get a discussion going there. If it's easier to reach me that way, um, uh, that is also a great option for you as well to keep that discussion going uh, as best we can. But if you were following my Instagram over the last little while, you would have seen I got a brand new pair of these. These are the New Balance 1080 um, V10s, their brand new version of the, the classic 1080 shoe that's been around for a little while now. And I absolutely love them so far. I only had them for a couple of weeks and started to wear them in now and just integrate them into my training. But I found they're a really good shoe. And I've worn the 1080 uh, for the last couple of years as my training shoe. Obviously with the stuff that I do middle of the year in terms of my umpiring, typically, and 2020 was a little bit different with no football season. So I didn't have um, the, the amount of time I would have in football boots um, usually. So I did a lot of running in a pair of runners and, and, and the, the, the old 10As and V9s um, that I needed to get a new pair before I would normally have to upgrade. So I was looking around, tried to find an old pair of V9s because I like using the same shoe as best I can and trying to uh, stretch it out until I have to upgrade to a different model that might change slightly. Couldn't find any, so I had to had to upgrade to the V10s and took a bit of a jump. But what I what I wanted to go through today is a, is a look at my thought process really when it comes to selecting the right shoe. What am I thinking about and also from a bit of discussion with people in the industry what am i thinking about when it comes to finding a shoe that is going to perform well first and foremost but then also um, be comfortable to run in um, lean into the side of things where it's going to give me the support i need in particular areas or it's going to give me enough durability to then be able to perform lots of k's all of these little factors that are going to add up to make sure that my running is actually as effective as possible because at the end of the day if i have a really uncomfortable shoe or a shoe that's causing me more issues than it is good that's not gonna be a great thing. That's probably gonna lead me to injury or lead me to frustration and, and sort of ruin my training. And then all else fails, you're gonna to have to go and buy another pair of shoes, which is never great, uh, particularly when you're working on a budget. I like to think as a, as a part-time master's student doing my master's, I'm back as a uni student, budgets are tight. So trying to make the most of every dollar spent is also something I'm a big uh, advocate of. But when it comes to my decision-making and why did I go for a shoe like this? First and foremost, I really like um, the, the weight of New Balance. That's probably the thing I, I look at as a primary thing now, and it's something I never used to really consider because I didn't do massive amount of Ks in, in runners traditionally. Like I said, most of my Ks would be in football boots from about February through to September. I would train predominantly, all my run training would be on grass, on an oval, change of direction, so I need those stops underneath, um, and football boots were a good option for that. Whereas this year, I got forced to run on concrete a lot more. I had to run um, in, in those restrictions with 5K radius in, here in Melbourne. I had to run um, in some different locations. I didn't have games, so I wasn't running on grass all the time. So a pair of runners, in terms of having lightweight runners, then got me into that replica, uh, replicating that feeling again. I've been in New Balance the last couple of years, so that's also sort of led me down the decision. I like to stay um, consistent is probably another component to this. Staying consistent with your choice of shoes also helps you uh, minimize the difference. But what I also do is I have a, a dedicated s a couple of sets of training shoes. So I'll have my training uh, training runners. And then also I rotate around a lot when it comes to casual shoes. So I'm never wearing the same pair. And that also helps my feet constantly adapt because when we, when we think about how the body was naturally built, we were, we were naturally built to not wear shoes fundamentally. We have these arches in the feet and why a lot of athletes or people have a lot of issues with their feet 
it's because they're over, I guess, over compensating for the fact that we've got all these foam and support technology in shoes these days. In terms of support through some of these shoes, it might be actually a bit more damaging long term because we're just so used to, oh, you have to wear a pair of shoes. But fundamentally, humans were built to run and move without shoes as a, as a primary primary focus. So by me changing up my, my casual shoes constantly, keeps my foot sort of, I guess, flexible in terms of it doesn't adapt to a specific type of shoe. But when it comes to training performance, I want that consistency because that's gonna help me make sure that every stride I put through or every time my foot plants, I'm getting that consistent feel under my foot. And it's always gonna be consistently supported when I need to, particularly when the loading goes through my body a little bit higher. At walking intensities, there's not much load. When I'm running at higher intensities and particularly just went out and did a VO2 set today at 95% of VO2 max, putting a lot of load through my shoes. So I want to make sure I've got the right support underneath me that I need. That's the first part. Consistency, a lightweight shoe is always useful, but then also something that just feels comfortable, I think is an underrated quality of getting a, getting a running shoe. I've been in, uh, I've been in Asics before. I've worn Brooks. I've worn New Balance years ago when I was a kid. I had New Balance main, mainly when I was really young because I had an N on the side and I thought that was really cool that I had an N on my shoes for, for Nick rather than New Balance. But in, in terms of jumping around, I've tried a lot of different things. Um, I have a quite a wide foot, so finding a shoe that is wide enough to support that is, is great. New Balance do a good job. Asics did a really good job for a while, but again, the thing that left me out of that was, um, I guess from a performance aspect, they shoes just started getting a little bit heavy for what I was wanting, um, and so New Balance is the way to go. Now, in terms of some of these other features, I really like this little scoop that they've added onto the, the V10s this year for the, for the New Balance 1080s really just helps to lock in the ankle. I quite like that sort of almost sock feel. I've got that also on my footy boots. So that's probably why I, I sort of have enjoyed it. I was a bit skeptical about it first because it looks a bit strange, this little sort of scoop at the back. But um, again, it all just adds to the comfort aspect. And really it's, if you're in a comfortable shoe, that's probably going to get you most of the way there. Then we can worry about performance after that. I had this great discussion um, with Paul McKinn, the balance runner. Uh, go check him out on Instagram. I might leave his stuff down below. Uh, we, we talk a lot about running technique. He's the go-to when it comes to running technique and improving endurance uh, athletes' form. He's done. I've done a lot of work with myself and a number of athletes I've worked with, and we've had some excellent results. But we were talking the other day about um, athletes buying shoes just because it's what they see their favorite professional athlete use. And I think that's a really sort of, when I say dangerous game to play because it's not necessarily meeting your needs. I've talked about, I wanted uh, my needs in terms of lightweight. It needs to be comfortable. It needs to provide the support that I need at certain intensities. It needs to give me what I, what I am looking for out of shoe, the width, all of these different things to make my decision. If you're then basing your decision just based on, well, a pro is wearing Vaporfly next percent, or they're wearing Hocker, um, Hocker shoes, or they're wearing New Balance, or whatever they might be, just because they're they're wearing them doesn't mean it's necessarily the right shoe for you. And I think that's something I want to stress here as well as another component is go and find the appropriate shoe and the appropriate fit. Don't worry about brand necessarily. If you're going out and with an open mind, it's much easier to find the shoe that's actually going to be useful. Have a bit of a trial. I know a lot of places uh, it can be difficult if you're buying online. It can be difficult to try a shoe first. I, for the first time, bought these uh, online. I normally will go into a store and try them on. I'm a bit old fashioned when it comes to that, but I want to make sure that's okay. I got a great place, um, a great sort of shop here in Melbourne that um, you're able to run on a treadmill. I know a lot of places have that now. At least you can try them on and give them a go. Get shoes as well also gives you like a 30 to 40 day period where you can go try them. And as long as they're not beaten up and damaged, like these got a little bit of stain on the side from where I've run the last week or so, but as long as they're not damaged and they look reasonably new, you can actually take them back after running them in sort of 40 days if you if they don't work. So that gives you a pretty sort of good time period to then go, do I actually think this shoe is gonna be worthwhile long-term? They're my thoughts, that's a bit of a summary. How do you select your shoes? I'm interested to hear your thoughts down below. Are you from the podiatry side of things? What are some recommendations you might give to our community here? Leave them down below as well. Um, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel and go jump across to Instagram. We are, as I said right at the beginning of the video, we are getting close to a thousand followers. So I'm really appreciative of that. If you haven't hit the follow button, go check me out down below at NJ underscore sports science um, to check out posts like these. When I get a new pair of shoes or a new pair of gear comes in, usually that's the first place I post. So you can keep up to date with all the things that are coming out uh, as well by going and giving my Instagram a follow. Otherwise, that is it for today. Hope you got something out of it in terms of my thoughts around shoe selection and we'll see you in the next one.